Hello, and welcome to Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. I'm standing in front of the Martin A. Pomeranz Observatory, also known as MAPO. It's been the home of Cosmic Array Background Instruments for over 25 years. It is the current home of the Bicep Array, and I am the 2021 Winter Rubber Scientist. BICEP stands for Background Imaging of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization. The BICEP program, which began observing 15 years ago with BICEP-1, aims to offer direct proof supporting the theory of cosmological inflation, which is a key unproven puzzle piece of our current understanding of the formation of the universe. To do this, we are looking for evidence of B-mode polarization from primordial gravitational waves. Unfortunately, this is an incredibly faint signal that is distorted by a variety of sources of noise in between the edge of the observable universe and us. To better understand these noise sources and improve our ability to isolate the quiet signal we are after, we have employed several iterations of telescopes throughout the program, increasing data collection capability in both quantity and quality each time. The latest version, Bicep Array, will employ four cryogenic refractive telescopes operating at a variety of frequencies. A combination of 30 and 40 gigahertz on one receiver, 95 gigahertz, 150 gigahertz, and another combination of 220 and 270 gigahertz. Unlike our neighbor down the street, Bicep 3, the Bicep Array telescope has its compressors and air handler for the coolant loop directly underneath it. It is rather loud in this room and difficult to hear anything else. However, we can still go on a tour and I can explain what we are looking at. The telescope mount provides three axes of rotation. The entire assembly can rotate about a skyward pointing axis, which is the azimuth direction. It can also tilt over on its elevation axis to point further down in the sky. Lastly, the telescope can also rotate about an axis central to all receivers independent of the azimuth axis. We call this boresight rotation. This allows the clocking of the assembly of four receivers to be controlled at different elevation angles. Since our antenna array uses orthogonal slot antennas, rotating about the bore site is how we fully capture polarization. A particular feature of the recent BICEP telescopes is the helium rotary joint. Through a series of connected channels on the inside of this unit, helium continues to be transferred while the telescope rotates, eliminating the need for wraps of excess hose and allowing the telescope to rotate in the azimuth or bore site axes indefinitely. You can clearly see the difference in size between the bicep array receiver and the old Keck array receivers. An increase in diameter directly leads to more room for detectors for a given frequency. In its final form, bicep array will have over 30,000 detectors. The receivers, which are internally held under vacuum, are cooled at various points by a dual stage pulse tube refrigerator, which compresses and expands helium gas as well as a multi-isotope helium sorption refrigerator, which condenses and evaporates helium gas. This allows our focal plane to achieve temperatures on the order of 250 millikelvin. The focal plane is heated to a controlled temperature slightly above this in order to keep our transition edge sensors on the transition to superconductivity. The boxes you can see on the underside of the receiver are responsible for focal plane data collection as well as all other data collection and control. This includes things like internal temperature sensors, as well as control of the heaters and cooling units. The South Pole is an excellent place for CMB data collection due to the incredibly stable sky. We're at a high elevation and there is minimal water content in the thin atmosphere. We also have a continuous view throughout the year of the specific patch of sky we have been looking at for the past 15 years, and months of the darkest skies on the planet. Lastly, the infrastructure that comes along with the rest of Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station is incredibly well equipped to support our research.